Whether your beer is in a bottle, can, or glass, kick back and relax. It's Better on Draft. Welcome, everybody. Episode 335 of the Better on Draft podcast. My name is Ken. Thank you so much for joining us. I truly appreciate it. Today it is Friday, February, or February, December 15th. Either I'm ahead of myself or way behind myself. Definitely not the meds talking, that's for sure. I've got two of my co-hosts with me. Wendy, if you haven't seen on our social media, has been having an amazing beer trip, uh, visiting a lot of friends, going to a lot of breweries. I'm sure she'll have a lot to talk about next week. Uh, but let's start with uh, Rob. Rob, what are you drinking? Uh, let's see. I've got seen colors from Mad Tree in Cincinnati. Um, this is day eight of my advent calendar. I have not caught up. <laughs> Need to start working on that. Just start calling you Nick here pretty soon. <laughs> yes, you're a whole week behind. Dan, um, what are you drinking? I'm back with uh, Sun Up White Russian because as long as I can get it on draft, I'm pretty happy. So, hey, Rob's been here three weeks now. When are we adding him to the intro? Next year. No, oh, next year. Okay. Uh, so, so like far. two weeks, <laughs> something like that. One, I got to commission it and then it's got to look good. I got to find some better photos of Rob, you know, instead of the, the blurry focus in, focus out, focus in. Yeah. So we'll we'll definitely get it done, that's for sure. Uh, for myself, I am drinking a regular ass dragon's milk barrel aged stout, no adjuncts, oh, yeah. just your regular stouts. And I am washing it down with the dollar seventy nine special that is Labatt Blue Light. <laughs> oh yeah, all right. <laughs> Every single Thursday after I get out of bowling, uh, there's a Speedway gas station right next to my bowling alley. And I go in there and I'm like, oh, you know, I'll probably just buy a soda for myself for the next day. And then I look at the price of soda and look at the price of the tall boys of Labatt Blue. And I come out with you cans know, of Labatt Blue. I used to bring that up all the time. Um, you used to be able to get for like a dollar six or a dollar nine with the deposit. You could get a Milwaukee's best uh, tall boy. Like, how is that less expensive than water? It doesn't even make sense to me. Um, you're going to have to bring that up to the Nestle Corporation, most likely, <laughs> as they'll be able to assist you with that. Uh, we are live, of course, on plenty of platforms. That's uh, every Friday, 7.15 p.m. Eastern, Facebook, Twitch, Kick, uh, YouTube, Instagram now. We are live on Instagram. So join us. Join us in the chat. Say hi. Oh, we hope to hear from fancy. you soon, especially if you are uh, listening to this show on podcast. Of course, you can find the videos on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, but with today, we do not have a guest. It is the holiday season. So guests are obviously doing their releases and having parties and events. Uh, so it's usually always hard to get guests around this time. Uh, so we are going to have a, a little bit of a conversation, it looks like, between the three of us. Uh, just shooting the shit, I guess you could say. I've got some uh, Am I the Assholes, though. Uh, some really, oh really good ones that I want to make, you know, go over with you guys. And uh, we're going to start with one, and then we'll kind of go into uh, some other conversations. Uh, but this one is more more near and dear to me coming from the industry as uh, as a whole. Uh, especially after you see a lot of things on TikTok and Instagram and all these other social medias about people not tipping for their Instacart or not tipping for their DoorDash or Uber Eats. So am I the asshole for not tipping on an $11 beer? Last night after getting off of work, my girlfriend and I went to a local brewery after we got both off of work. Note where we live is kind of a hip college town. So it's all micro brew this and local craft that. We each got a flight, which is like a sampler of four little cups. And so you get to try several of the drinks. They're not good in my book already uh, that they make. Total each flight is 12 ounces. So 75% of a pint, give or take. The bartender was nice, but nothing extraordinary service wise happened. We walked up, got ID'd, ordered our drinks, and I paid. And so I didn't really get to talk, get opinions on beers, try whatever. I never expect any of that, but I want to give all the facts here. The total with tax for the two flights was $25. I clicked the no tip option on the little screen. I don't know if anyone saw it and nothing came of it, but it's been nagging me. So I'd really like some opinions regarding if I was in the wrong here. 
on the one hand, I know tipping is the norm here at Texas USA. On the other hand, surely this place can afford to pay their staff better, right? The cheapest beer was like $8 a pint. Am I the asshole? Uh, Rob? Um, so probably not. <laughs> um, well, okay. So there's a couple of factors here that, that might lead them to being the asshole. One is that they got two tasting flights. Um, and that's, so that's eight it is a bit more than just buying a beer. Um, if you are eating two beers, so it's four times more in fact. <laughs> so it is definitely more work for the server. So that factors there. Um, those prices sound like it might be the type of place. I, I went to a place in Madison um, uh, where the beers were expensive. They weren't quite that expensive, but they were expensive for even for the area. And when I went to tip, they said, oh, we're paid a living wage. We don't do tips, but our tips go to this charity instead. So hitting the no tip button is still the right move because there's credit card fees and all that stuff that get, get taken out of it. Cash would be a better option in that case, but it's potentially possible that <laughs> this place in Texas does that. I don't know. Typically, when you have those types of businesses, like there is a place out in Ypsilanti that just opened up called Best in Games, and it's this massive multi-story multiplex with like indoor go-karts and axe throwing and arcade games. And there's like classic arcade and then like the, the ticket arcade and laser tag like this is this giant venue. And when I went to tip. They said, oh, no, we don't do tips because she literally just ran my card, gave me my receipt, and I was good to go. And I'm like, whoa, you know, I felt bad thinking I wasn't tipping. But here I am like, you know, they said, oh, we we don't accept tips. We get tips. So in this kind of situation, I think a lot of places that do pay their fair wage want to tell you they pay their fair wage um, like B Nectar does in Ferndale, Michigan. So I don't think there is... You know, I, I, I understand giving the benefit of the doubt, but uh, you brought up the reason why for, for me, like I'm I'm anti-flight is the fact that a lot of these bartenders need to go and do, you know, four, well, eight, because there's two of them, small three ounce pours and then serve them when they might be behind or there might not be a lot of people there or a lot of service people there, but a lot of people there, Um, especially if you go in like a group of like 20 and you're all getting flights like that poor wait staff. That's got to go pour all those small little three, three ounce pours. Uh, Dan, are they the asshole? Oh, so I wanted to touch on this real quick here. Talk about the living wage. I mean, Arizona pays servers minimum wage here. Um, Not any type of bullshit. Um, so that's going to definitely vary state to state. Um, I, I mean, I would have given them a dollar or two. I usually give a dollar a beer. If I buy a beer, you know, they have to pour it. Um, so maybe, maybe not it really depends. It, you know, we don't know the situation there, so they could be, or they couldn't be just kind of like what Rob said. It really does depend. Texas itself is a two thirteen an hour state. So they get paid assuming that they're getting paid the bare minimum $2 and 13 cents per hour. That would be the waiters. That's not the bartenders. Bartenders uh, barely get paid that. Bartenders usually are a few dollars more, um, but not there. If from my experience setting up payroll for a lot of different, you know, bars and restaurants and stuff, um, depending on how the setup is, is, a lot of times the bartenders are charged at two thirteen an hour because they get tipped out by the wait staff too, so they get an extra tip on tip. Um, and then there are others where like a bartender may make five to six dollars an hour instead of the $2 because they are managing, you know, the alcohol for the entire venue where I see this, this is a, um, you know, I'm, I'm assuming this is just a brewery. Uh, they don't talk about food. They don't talk about nothing here. So it's beer only. Um, so I doubt there's really too much in the service part of service. Like it's all bar service. This was however, five years ago, pre COVID. Therefore it might've been, um, that but they said they walked up so i'm guessing they went to the bar to get the the draft to then sit down so in the end we're talking about probably two dollars that the server is missing out on yeah i agree so if if you're the asshole there's certainly worse things you could have done (laughs) uh and and to uh add on to the 
the flight part of it, they have to wash those glasses. And it takes the same amount of effort to wash those little glasses as it does to wash the pint glasses. You mean putting them in a dishwasher? Yeah. And, I know. and getting them out of the dishwasher <laughs> and putting them back in the right spot. Yeah. <laughs> or, you know, going through the triple sink process with the rinse um, and the sani and letting it air dry. Because I doubt that they have a full dishwasher there. I'm pretty sure everything's probably just sani rinse and uh, triple sink. Um, for me, I, I, I want to expand on this a little bit further because I, I disagree with both of you, um, dare I might say, so uh, does the rest of the world just FYI (laughs) disagree with both of you No, disagree with you. I'm sorry. (laughs) So the, the rest of the world, yes, you're putting a lot of proper, like I, I am in for paying them a proper wage and putting that 20% into the food drink price and just paying them what they should be paid. Uh, so I, I agree there, but we live in this world. Therefore, we have to live in this world of uh, decisions and this world of uh, actions and reactions. We have to uh, play by the rules of the playbook that we've been given. So for me, when I go into typically like a bar or brewery, I, I too am usually like a, a dollar and change for the, the beer uh, for the tip. But when I get into anything more than like $10, if I'm there for more than just a beer, typically then I'm still going to be doing my 20%. Um, I always, and, and this is just my own personal rules. Like I won't do 20% on a lot of things like to go beer. Like if I'm getting cans of to go beer, like I might, if they're, if they're back in the COVID days, they were delivering it right to my car, like walking up and bringing it to me. And I'm basically treating it like a drive through in Ohio. Great. Sure. But now if I'm going in there, I'm ordering, I'm walking in, you know, I might tip uh, at most 10% for, for that kind of stuff. But if I'm bringing wait, like wait. a, Wait, hold on. You're tipping yeah. when you go in and pick up beer. Typically, like yeah. Like getting stuff out of a cooler. Uh if it's if it's me just going in there getting the beer and leaving, no, but if it's like, you know, behind the wall like they're the ones that are uh grabbing it, then yeah, usually I take the uh put a little tip in there. This is exactly how this gets out of hand. I <laughs> sorry, go ahead, continue. Well, no, the, the, the tipping community, the tipping industry, community. Uh, <laughs> when, when I say that, what I'm referring to is, is there, there are times where it's gotten out of hand. Like if you actually do go into any social medias like TikTok or Instagram and you see um, fun little videos of like a priest giving you a communion wafer and then turning a little phone that has like a tip thing on there uh, to tip the priest, you know, those kinds of things like. The, it's an over exaggeration, but it's very fucking close to reality. It's um, and the tip button suddenly going from 10, 15, 20 to all of a sudden 20, 25, 30. Yep. <laughs> now, now, one that is every single restaurant, bar, brewery puts those numbers in there. Yes. So that's not square, toast, arrived, et cetera, doing that. They could have done that before. Um, but I think as the. Uh, the trend moves forward and people are are going, but you can always hit other tip. Uh, obviously, like this guy, you can hit no tip. Um, I I like the the places that give you the the percentages and cost at the bottom and tells me what twenty percent is, and then I don't have to worry about the math at all. <laughs> the the numbers I'm usually dealing with are small enough that doesn't matter, but often those percents are on the tax and all that, and so you get into like there's a whole philosophy behind what the proper tip should be. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm happy with not hitting any of the button, hitting the no tip button and throwing a couple bucks over the counter. Like that's perfect. <laughs> Doing the cash. As, yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I always suggest tipping cash. I always have cash on me. Um, when I'm out to, to bars and breweries, if I'm, if I'm on like a massive trip or something like that, like I might just want to put everything on my credit card just to make my life easier than carrying cash. Uh, but every week when I go to bowling, like I tip in cash. So I pay my card tip in cash. Every time I go to like a restaurant, though, like I always usually tip on card because I'm usually just paying for my with my card for everything. So I guess it's really super dependent on what it is for those that don't know. And we talked about it. You might talk maybe two years ago on our TikTok. We talked about tipping clawbacks. 
which is when a bar, restaurant, et cetera, says, all right, you made $200 in tips, credit card tips, but we get charged three and a half percent on that. So I'm taking three and a half percent. So $7 of your $200 to pay for the credit card fees that got charged for your tip. So things like that can happen again. I, Dan, I agree with you. It's, <laughs> it's out of hand and it needs to, yeah. it needs so, to end, but there's no, there's, I don't, I don't foresee any way for this to end anytime soon, unless you have a, a grand idea of how to just be like, we're done. Why, why can't, why can the rest of the world go without it? I mean, you know, a I couple think, months ago I was in New Zealand. Like they're like, no, no one gets sick. We get paid like $30 an hour. Like, how is that just not possible in the U S it's, it's greed by these companies that know they can get away with putting the wages onto their workers out of the customers versus them having to pay it. So I'm, I'm going to give you half credit on that statement. Um, and the reason I say that is, is that when we were talking 70 years ago, when most restaurants, diners and stuff were individually owned, they were owned by a small business proprietor that lived in the city that hired the people in the city. And they relied on those smaller wages to be able to then, you know, keep going, keep their prices competitive versus the other, you know, other restaurants in the area. But now as we have multiple conglomerates to the point where we have brewery conglomerates, we have fast casual pizza places like Blaze and fast casual Subway and all these different types of fast casual restaurants, fast food restaurants, regular restaurants like your Applebee's and TGI Fridays are still around doing their dollar margaritas on Wednesdays. Um, (laughs) Hell yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> when you're competing against them, it's hard to compete against them. So businesses like uh, Three Nick Scoreboard in Allen Park might have to rely on lower wages and the uh, ability to uh, put that onus on the guest to be able to tip. Um, I I don't know what the history is though. If the rest of the world did it and got rid of it though, do you know that Dan? Like, did New Zealand I, I, at one point? No idea. Um, just, you know, same in Europe, too. Every time I've gone there, they're like, number one, no one uses cash anywhere. They get annoyed usually, especially in New Zealand, if you try to use cash, because that was a COVID thing, I guess, that just kind of drove that away. Um, well, have you ever used euros, like the paper ones? They don't fit in a wallet. <laughs> well, they don't fit in our wallets. So same with, uh, same with the money in New Zealand. They're all different size based on the dollar amount which is, I guess it's for blind people is why they do oh, yeah, that. Yeah. It makes sense. And that's yeah. great, but they're all not, they don't fit in our wallet. <laughs> no, not at all. Um, I forgot what my train of thought oh, was, sorry. but <laughs> no, it's okay. No, that's a, you brought up a good point, but um, I, I, if the rest of the world can do it, we can do it. You know, at the end of the day, you got to figure it out. If you can't pay your, pay your employees, you're maybe shouldn't be in business at the end of the day. I, uh, again, agree with you, um, and I'm probably part of the problem because I'm the one that both agrees with you and is like, hey, you all need to at least play by the rules right now until the rules change. Um, I, the I, worst one is, I, I don't mean to cut you off real quick, oh, but go this for just it. popped in my head. When they have you tip before anything's happened, they haven't mm-hmm. served you, they haven't made the food, like, come on. Like, why am I tipping you for ringing up my order? I... Okay. Um, (laughs) For, for me, when it comes to those types of policies, like I still, no matter what, I just tip my 20% and go on my way. Like I don't, I don't math it. I don't, you know, there, there's that meme of the, the dad that's teaching his son a lesson where he puts the five singles on the table. And every time the server messes up, he removes a single to teach that server a lesson for (laughs) serving that table in the first place. Um, I, I, like that's bullshit. Like there are so many factors that can happen. That is not the server's fault. The bartender could have misplaced your ticket, not made your drinks. And you know, it might've taken extra time or the kitchen could have been backed up because a party came in that didn't reserve. So they weren't prepared. So they're trying to catch up. So there's a litany of things that can happen that really aren't affected by the, or aren't affected by the, bartender server but they get the blame for it all uh they get the blame for withholding wage they get the blame for withholding tip like 
that and God forbid you go to one of these restaurants and stuff that if you, you know, somebody dines and dashes on one of these servers and the <laughs> owner tries to take it out of your paycheck, like that's as, still a thing. <laughs> oh, it's it's a hundred percent illegal too. Um, but people will still try to do it, or if they don't, you know. Um, if he doesn't want you to, or they try to withhold your check or something like that, there's a lot of shady shit that goes on within the restaurant industry still. At some point, tipping went from becoming a reward for good service to now it's, it's just expected as part of this person's wages because yeah, well, our food is cheap. Yeah. 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 I, I never really went into the, like, for me, I here's here's one thing I want to ask you guys, and I always hark on my friends, coffee drinks, not even just like poured black coffee, like a latte or a mocha or something that involves espresso, foamed milk, um, you know, adjuncts, you know, additives, etc. Like, do you guys tip on coffee when you go to a Starbucks or something like that? I would throw in a buck for something like that. If I know the person has to do extra work, like serious extra work, not the standard, like if I just got a macchiato at, at Starbucks or something, there is some extra work there, but that's something they do all day long. But if it's, you know, one of the uh, Frappuccino, that one seems to take a lot of extra effort with blenders and you know, lots of extra time. Oh, and then you got to clean it after every time. And yeah. it's I and so I used to be a barista, Rob, um, for <laughs> like three years for different. Uh, coffee companies and i was talking to a a friend of mine who i used to work with dan knows him as the kid and we were talking about how much money we would have cleared if we had these new technology machines like a toast point of sale or arrived point of sale where you can have the tip right there and people push the button to add the tip um and how much we would have made because i used to clear like three dollars in a six hour period working at some of these coffee shops um and it it was just annoying as all hell but for me even if it's as you know simple as pouring me a coffee from their little coffee pot or uh opening up a bottle of beer uh i always seem to tip you know a dollar or two dollars on any of that just because it's it just seems like it's the thing that you have to do in this day and age if I'm drinking yeah. for a while um, in a place, especially a place I know, then my standard tip is essentially a beer for the staff. So I tip, you know, five, six dollars for the staff if I've been. And it doesn't matter how much I've spent or uh, if I got a growler or any of that. If if I've been there for a while, usually I know the people uh, after I've been there for a while. But <laughs> then I, I'll throw them a beer is, is what I feel like I'm doing. When you get into that type of territory, though, where you're staying there for a long period of time, like say you're going to a bar to watch a Lions game and you're committed there for four hours, you're locked in that table and that server for four hours. You're not turning that table. That cust- that server can't make any more money on that table. Um, there are a lot of things to factor in when it comes to that. Again, the resolution is paying them a fair wage, but that I I. I would love to maybe follow up with you, Dan, in Mm -hmm. in a few weeks on this conversation. If you can do some research on some European countries, if they went from tipping to not tipping and see if how we could implement it into the United States, because even after all this and a lot of people agree with you, there is going to be bartenders and servers and stuff who will not want it because they clear so much money on their, you know, specific day whatever whatever day of the week working at you know texas roadhouse because a a four-person meal at texas roadhouse is 75 dollars 15 dollar tip and that's you know if you clear four tables in an hour you're making 60 bucks in tips yeah the one place i can see people getting mad about it you know it's like a high-end steakhouse we have a really good steakhouse out here called steak 44 and like if you get up and like go to the bathroom they like take your food and put it aside to make sure it stays good all kinds of things like it's ridiculous. So I could see someone like that getting mad because, you know, last time I went, there was a $300 tab, you know, you know, that we're paying them, giving them $75 Mm -hmm. on top of it. Um, So then I could definitely see that getting up to, but I mean, these places like Texas roadhouse, you know, they could pay a higher wage, you know, if in and out can pay 22 to $25 an hour. And my, you know, that argument out there is like, Oh, you're, Big Mac will be $15. No, my my triple at uh, 
in and out is like seven dollars so if places like that can do it everyone can do it it's just kind of ridiculous when people it, use that argument they could do it we don't need quite so many texas roadhouses around and apple that's and true all yeah those. that's true too so that's part of it there's just yeah that's so many the of them chain yeah the chain casual restaurants like that i agree i i can't even believe people still go to applebee's like what what do you go there for it's cheap <laughs> You know, Walker Hayes says Applebee's on a date night. That's fancy. Like, I forgot about that song. <laughs> I, uh, that's, that's one of my go tos when I tell customers, uh, at my job if they want to ban, like, if they're a restaurant, like, oh, you want to probably ban a song like this because it talks about Applebee's and you don't want to promote Applebee's <laughs> at your restaurant. I mean, they got I, that like three for 10 or whatever now. I keep seeing the commercial for. So I, I think we're we're not necessarily in agreement here. Some uh, they they are the asshole. They're not the asshole uh, commentary, but a lot more commentary on the actual tipping part itself. Yeah, they should have tipped. Along that. <laughs> they should have tipped, uh, and hopefully they will in the future. But um, it's not a horrible thing. I mean, a no tip is more of a statement than. You know, even a dollar, like a dollar, the server will be like, yeah, whatever. They just paid me a dollar because they thought it was a drink or something like that. I don't, a quarter shows that you you thought about it. You That's more of a statement. A, no tip means that you could have forgotten or you just hate those stupid tip buttons on the on the machine. <laughs> that's uh, that's almost like the uh, the movie Waiting with uh, is that Ryan Reynolds, Justin Long, Dane Cook. If you remember Dane Cook, yeah, he fell off real fast. Uh, he did. He did. He's trying to make a comeback, though. Every once in a while, I'll see him on TikTok live just talking to fans. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you're a thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this this is definitely a good one. Um, I've I've been lucky enough in my life to never have lived with a roommate. Um, so other than like a, a significant other. Uh, but am I the asshole for making my home bar off limits to my roommate? I live with two of my good friends. Let's call them Brad and Paul. Paul is our new roommate this lease before our because our previous one had a falling out with Brad and was acting controlling and blah, blah, blah. I love living with these fools and we're very close. Recently, though, Brad has been a little too comfortable with my at home bar. I'm a bartender and really love craft cocktails and all the nerdy stuff about it. I put a decent amount into liquor, glassware, freezer, decor, etc., Brad did supply the actual bar, physical bar, tap and counter I stand behind, which is why I think he assumes it's okay. Recently, I've noticed Brad likes to make himself a drink or two, and that's totally fine. He Venmos me and everything. However, bro just leaves everything laying on the bar. My tools, liquor, dirty glassware, straws, beer bottles, fruit garnishes, etc. It especially sucks when he has a bunch of people over while I'm at work and I come home to all my glassware just scattered all over the place with drinks still in them and fruit flies everywhere. On top of this, he has like 20 plants in the window next to the bar. And when he tends to get those get the dirt everywhere on the bar and my tools on my fruit, etc. and doesn't clean it up. I politely told him multiple times to please pick up after yourself, especially since it is all my stuff that he is using. Seems fair, right? Well, dude, bro keeps doing it. So I told him if you can't respect my property and keep my area clean, then don't go back there. I felt so mean saying that, but I'm so forgiving to everyone in my life. It takes a lot for me to get slightly annoyed. I don't want to be like our old roommate and hate him. I feel like he just needs to pick up. Too long, didn't read. Roommates use all of my bar tools, alcohol, glassware, and doesn't pick up anything left out. Is the roommate an asshole, Dan? Okay, the roommate or the guy who whose bar it is? Make sure I'm understanding. So the the roommate is the one that makes everything dirty and uh, uses the bar, even though he bought the physical bar itself. Okay. Um, he uses all the tools and liquor and makes drinks and then just leaves it spread out throughout the house. But are we asking if he's the asshole or the guy who wrote the story? Uh, well, That's it's supposed to be the, the guy who wrote the story. So yeah, okay. is he the asshole okay. for telling him to stop using his bar? Um, if the roommate who's using it isn't contributing to the liquor and just making a mess, I mean, how hard is it to clean up glasses and not get dirt from like your plants, whatever hippie ass shit he's doing there? Um, yeah, if you're not contributing to the liquor and can't, you know, wash a few glasses, 
no, he's not the asshole. If he is contributing to the liquor, you just got to have a conversation with him about you need to start doing the damn dishes if you're using them. So he is contributing. He says that anytime that his uh, roommate uses alcohol, he typically Venmos him money saying, hey, this is for the alcohol I used. Okay. Like every, if he does that every time, that's cool. I mean, then yeah, you just need to have a conversation and tell him, look, if you can't clean up your glasses and the mess you make, you can't use it. Simple as that. I don't think he's the asshole for asking for that. Yeah, I think the the big thing was uh, he um, he's upset because it just dirties up the place and he just leaves it dirty for uh, the original poster to clean up. Yeah, and, and that's just laziness. You know, you got to kick that guy in the ass and be like, listen, like there's glasses ever clean it up. <laughs> On our Instagram page <laughs> at draft 207 says just clean up. I agree. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know about you. Dan, Dan's known me for a long time, Rob. And for me, like, even as the party is going, like, I am typically the one running around making sure shit's picked up and cleaned up. And one, I like a clean party. But two, I don't want to be it to be three, four in the morning and I'm picking up beer bottles from all over the random place, like leaving it there. Like, I'm I'm definitely on top of it. It's also the excuse to go say hi to everybody because I'm walking around doing stuff and I'll stop and chit chat and shit. Uh, but Rob, is this guy the asshole? Yeah, you've learned from experience. <laughs> it's not <it's> like... <laughs> Um, so the guy ma- making the request is not the asshole. I don't know that he can bar him from using the bar, but uh, it certainly is equipment because glasses and stuff. That's tools of the trade. All all of that equipment is tools of the trade. The guy making it messy. That's a problem. Like, But I'm also wondering how he's storing the stuff that dirt is just randomly falling on it. Yeah. That, you know, because there's a lot of stuff like it should be covered. <laughs> All right, let's let's go back. On top of this, he has like 20 plants in the window next to the bar. And when he tends to those, he gets dirt everywhere on the bar. Don't even on the, so, and, and I can understand that we've got a bunch of house plants in the house. And yeah, dirt gets places, but it gets cleaned up. Um, but it, it, he said he was getting it into the fruit and, and things like that. And I'm just wondering about his his methodology. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, leaving what, this fruit it, uncovered. Yeah, not is, used. why are you? Why is that not put away? Like, yeah. why is the fruit just on the bar uncovered? Yeah, the the fruit flies are going to be because those plants have flies in them. They they <laughs> need to take care of that too. Like, <laughs> it sounds like it's well. I I don't know that I'd want to go over there. <laughs> this guy's got a jungle. It's probably a bunch of weed plants growing too, which is even funnier. Yeah, <laughs> I well hold on. Let's see. They they didn't give me a um. A city, like a city state for the original poster, and it is only from three months ago, so it might be a um, uh, you know, there's so many states that it's legal now these days. I mean, not necessarily to grow, but at this point, nobody cares. Yeah, uh, I don't know how much people care. As long as you weren't like selling, Texas stuff anyway. does. Ooh, oh, yeah, Texas, Texas does. Yeah. Texas does. I, I had a friend who was who was on medicinal and had to move to Texas for a job and literally had to quit the job because like the, the medicinal marijuana was so needed for his like pain and stuff like pain management. And he's like, I just got to move somewhere else and take a shitty job because uh, I can't be in pain and work uh, for me. I, I, I like to sit, set rules when it comes to when people come over, like I'm very, very uh, forthcoming with what you can and can't touch um typically at my like when i had my apartment in detroit like i had a beer fridge and that was the community fridge all beer in there is free game and i always made sure to put my own beer my own specialty stuff um in there and then when i had liquor i would set out the the liquor that i wanted everyone to drink but i would still have my liquor cabinet where people can see and if they'd ask me typically i'd probably say yes um but i'm not going to say yes to like uh, some drunk dude uh being like oh hey can i open up this really expensive whiskey that you haven't cracked open yet uh no that's just not going to happen oh, um, it, was Dan. it wasn't me i promise <laughs> i was the one that told him i opened us was it a scotty karate or yeah but that was had- that was in the community fridge oh no there was something you had sitting there when i had to go feed the cat one time i'm like oh. yeah i i, I had, took one drink and poured it down the drain i didn't like it you're like what's a fog <laughs> i i happen, but <laughs> um yeah, I still though like if you're if you're messing up your own place and not cleaning up after yourself, that's just poor manners in the first place, whether it's alcohol yeah. related or not. 
Oh yeah. Um, if I got to tell you to to pick up shit, like especially like dirty dishes and stuff, like come on, you're old enough. You're you're an adult. You've moved out. Like you know, dishes need to at least go in the sink for Christ's sake. Like yeah. at least put it somewhere to be cleaned, not just sitting with a half empty, you know, glass of whatever cocktail you made for your friend. Um, yeah. that's just sad. That's still children, adult children hanging out. So I think we both we all agree that the the original poster is not the asshole, and the guy he posted about is definitely just needs to grow up and clean up after himself. Yeah, one hundred percent. All right, this is one that I I really want your guys' opinion because I have such a bad um, mindset of guilt, like guilt and karma when this happens. Am I the asshole for not paying? For not paying, not alerting a clerk that I think she rung up an item wrong. My friends and I were debating the ethics behind what happened the other night when buying beer. I got a usually pretty expensive four pack of local craft beer. As the lady was ringing it up, I told my friend that I'd get his water as well. And I went to pay. I realized the total price was six bucks and change for the beer and water. That was way less than it usually is. But then I just paid and left when telling my other friend about the price. He said I was a scumbag for not pointing out the error and that she probably rang up the beer as one can. My defense was it's not my job to point out our store pricing er error, point out store pricing errors. And I didn't do anything shady to get to try to pull the wool over their eyes. We both agree that you should always tell a clerk if they forgot to ring something up or that straight up stealing. We defer about if a wrong price gets rung up, if we should notify the cashier. What do you guys think? Am I the asshole and should have said something? Or did the beer gods shine a ray of sunshine on someone who has spent a ton of money on great beer? Uh, we're going to start with Rob on this one. Sure. Um, so I don't think they're the asshole. Uh, it's If they noticed it right away and said something right away, then then that would probably have been better and they might not have felt so guilty. Uh, they're definitely not a scumbag. Um, like this, this sort of thing happens all the time where things get rung up wrong. And I, I remember once we bought a lemon and they rang up a melon, which that one amused me because they're anagrams, <laughs> uh, but <laughs> the price was wrong and it was way too high, but we, we noticed, you know, Oh, melon went by. We didn't buy a melon. We hate those. <laughs> so, but it, so it happens all the time. Um, of how they rang it up as one can instead of a six pack is kind of beyond me. Like that shouldn't be, I guess it, it might be, it might happen at like a total wine where every time you you scan that barcode, they have to say whether it's a can or a six pack and they have to hit the right button. So that's some skills. Um, <laughs> but I, so as to whether it's straight up stealing uh, in the legal definition, I think they would be hard pressed to be charged with or be found guilty of shoplifting in this case, like it's not like they intentionally did anything wrong. It just kind of happened. Uh, the cashier might get in trouble, but that's kind of that. So for me, I always like I I bring it to the attention if something seems amiss, whether either way. So if I get undercharged or overcharged, because I understand, you know, being in the life of retail, like I don't want this person to get fired for me to save $6 on a four pack of beer. Um, I, as much as it may have been their mistake or something like that, like it's their jobs, not worth my $6. Uh, this is of course a very niche thing. Like when you go into a grocery store and you're, you know, doing 150, you know, items, like you did your full two or three weeks worth of, uh, grocery shopping. Sure. You're probably not going to notice if something gets missed wrong or something like that. Um, but when you're going in there and you're buying like say a PS five and it gets rung up for, instead of $450, it gets <laughs> rung up for 450. You run up, um, ring up a tomato and run out the door at the yeah. self checkout. <laughs> but would you watch a, would you watch them ring up water in a six pack? Like you'd probably be on your phone or do or fiddling with your wallet or whatever. Like you wouldn't I mean, care. That that might be the case, but in, in the same sense, I also feel like what store is it? Um, because there are there there is a time where Dan and I we were at a casino in Arizona and one of our friends got overpaid 
on a bet and it was like a, a 250 dollar overpayment oh he was no it was worse he was supposed to get a hundred because he had a five i think it was high card flush he had a five card flush but they paid him for a six he got a 500 hundred dollar chip and we were both yeah. like get up like get, come on let's go <laughs> that that was a time where everyone at the table knew what was happening saw what dealer. happened except for the dealer and the pit boss because on a 500 hundred dollar chip you got to get uh, a call for a payout yeah and the the pit boss approved it and i remember i i told like i, matt, I think dan was just standing behind yeah. me because i think it was just matt and i playing and i told yeah. matt i told dan to get matt up off the table and cash out and start heading to the <laughs> immediately we, we walked right to the bar we're like just come on <laughs> yeah <laughs> we so i i think i definitely will probably feel less guilty if it's like a walmart um even though i'm more worried about the the employee than anything um for for that i I mean i guess i'm a a hypocrite which is fine uh dan what's your thoughts so um you know we don't know how it was in the pos system um they may have rang it up and the pos system has it priced differently what are you gonna do you know especially i don't i have to pay attention with the ringing things up anyways you know i have an idea of what it's gonna cost you know what the total is you know and Maybe there was a sale. I didn't realize if something was off like that. So no, like Rob said, they're not getting arrested. Cops aren't even showing up for that. If they're going to no. try something like that, definitely not a scumbag. Like what the fuck is that? <laughs> like get over it. Um, so I have a funny story about this. So you know, I'm, only a couple people know, but I think the statute of limitations has passed. Um, so uh, what are Xbox, we recording this? <laughs> yeah, it's recorded. I don't care if you don't care about this. Um, Xbox. Uh, Series X and PS5 came out a couple years ago. Pre-ordered them both. The PS5 was coming out first. Ordered it through Amazon. Um, It was out for delivery. Um, All of a sudden, they said, sorry, there was an issue with your order and refunded the card. But the PS5 got delivered. Oh. Yeah. Nothing I did. They were just like, oh, sorry, there was an issue with the order and refunded it. (laughs) But I have a PS5 sitting over there. In fact, I kept it in the closet. I didn't even pull it out for six months in case they're going to be like, oh, yeah, you know, you got to pay for that or send it back. And nothing ever came of it. So I got a PS5 for free. What am I supposed to do? Be like, hey, Amazon. Hey, Jeff Bezos. You, you're missing $500? It wasn't a PS5, but Amazon misdelivered something or other to my my house once. It, it was maybe $200 worth of, of stuff in a box. Um, some of it I was actually interested in. Most of it I wasn't. But I contacted them. I said, Hey, I got this. I didn't order this. I don't know who ordered this or anything. And they were like, yeah, okay. <laughs> and on we went. So, so I had this box of stuff I didn't really want or need. <laughs> they didn't yeah, ask you to send it back or anything. No, no. I think there there, there are effort. times where, where Amazon <laughs> just doesn't bother if they accidentally ship you the wrong thing or something gets delivered to your place. Get a free uh, that, PS5. That, that shouldn't have happened. Uh, you are right, though. The statute of limitations is up. It's only one year in Arizona. Uh, so so no uh, no worrying about that. Um, I, I like I'm not on top of it, but if I notice something like I have to say something like it's just one of those where like, all right, like, hey, you did this wrong. You know, let's ring this up right. Or, oh, hey, I haven't you know, there they'll be like, oh, that's a sale. You didn't know. Congratulations. Well, that's um, easy. So, yeah, you know, you got a good point. If it's two items. That's easy. If you've got a bunch of stuff, you may not even be paying attention and not notice it till you leave. You know, no, like I, I, I wouldn't have noticed unless it was like such a drastic change in my typical grocery shopping uh, cost. Like if it says it's like seven hundred dollars for the day, I'd just be like, uh, I don't think that's right. Let's <laughs> let's look at this receipt real quick. I did one of those. I, I today, I, my grocery shop was almost two hundred dollars more than usual, and then I remembered, oh yeah, there's Christmas presents in here. <laughs> I don't usually buy those when I'm out grocery shopping. <laughs> You go to the uh, the the gift card and uh, end cap and buy some stuff for the people you don't know what to buy for. This was Costco, and I'm, it's uh, people I'm going to see in person, and they had Lego. Ah, <laughs> all right. No Starbucks gift cards for you guys. That's right. You're getting Lego. <laughs> I think that's better anyway. I yeah, I, I agree. We did a Lego party here and I had a blast doing it. Like there was like eight of us and we were just drinking, listening to music and building our own little Lego sets. Like, oh, oh that's right, this is this is that's something fun. different that I never thought of before. But now it's just like, <laughs> all right, I kind of want to do it again. I got to build a uh, um, uh, a 
uh, I can't even remember his name though, but it's Mandalorian and then the baby Yoda. Um, this little guy is it his name, the Mandalorian? I have no idea. I've never well, watched it. The, the name of the Mandalorian is Mando. Mm. I don't know. They, they might have they might have actually said what his real name is, but everybody calls him Mando. And then Baby Yoga has a Grogu. That's his name. Uh, so Baby Yoda does have a name, Grogu. Mandalorian might actually have a an actual name, but everybody just calls him Mando for that. Um. All right, we got time for one more. Uh, I I think it's going to be an easy night tonight. Uh, thank you everybody for listening live. Of course, you could watch us live on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, Twitter, YouTube. Are we Pick. live on X? Uh, we are live on X. Yep. Sweet. Uh, Shout out to Elon. Else. He's probably watching Twitch. right now. Uh, Bats McGee. That's the name right there. Din Dejarin. Uh So that's Mando's actual name, but everybody just calls him Mando. Mandalorian's <laughs> actual name. Thank you, Bats McGee, over on Twitch. Uh, am I the asshole for wanting my brother to leave his wife home from the beer expo? <laughs> my <Probably>. brother <laughs> my brother has been with his wife for over 11 years they live together and have a three-year-old kid his wife and i get along fine but i hate that she is always around and i never get one-on-one time with my brother when i go to their house she is always in the living room with us and the kid i know it's her house too but i wish she would give us guy time and go to another room when i am over When he comes to visit my parents and me, he always brings her. You get the point. He always he's always busy with work, the kid or her before the kid. They always used to go to this beer expo that is held a few times a year. It would be a big group with their friends and me. And it was always fun. Obviously, they haven't gone since they had their kid. I got an email that it's happening again in three weeks and sent an email to my brother asking if he wanted to go. He said it sounds fun and he will get back to me. He called me up later and told me that they were in and purchased tickets for the three of us. I was pissed. I thought I would just be the two of us and assumed his wife would stay home with the kid so he could have a day off. I told him as much. He told me sorry, but him and his wife haven't had a fun day out in forever, and our mother agreed to take their kid for the day and overnight, and they were looking forward to it. He also said this beer expo was always something they would do together, and they have been going together for years, just the two of them, before they started inviting the big group. So it's kind of their thing. I told him to forget it and find someone else to take the third ticket. I told him I'm sick of his wife having to be included in everything. (laughs) He told my mom, and she is telling me to grow up. My brother texted me and told me he found a friend to take the ticket, but he wanted to give me one more chance if I wanted to come or not before he promised it to them. I told him to give it away, and he said fine, and we haven't spoken much since. I just wanted a day one-on-one with my brother without his wife and kid. Is he the asshole? Dan. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> For, what, hold on. So he didn't want a day with the wife and kid. Was a kid coming to the beer expo? I don't think so. Um, if he wanted it just to be him and his brother, he should have been flat out and told him that. Be like, hey, can it just be the two of us? Because what the hell are you doing? You know, <laughs> I guess, you know, and coming from someone, I'm not even going to get into that part. Never mind. Um, but yeah, this guy's the asshole. Um, if he wanted it to be just him and his brother, he should have presented it like that. It doesn't sound like he did. His uh, This guy knows that his wife also enjoys that. So, you know, it's probably expected that she would want to go too, especially hearing about it, especially if they haven't been out for a while. Um, I don't think it would be that big of a deal. Like, I think this guy's overreacting. He sounds like a child throwing a temper tantrum. Or, never mind, I can't say that either. Ken will be slapping my hand later. Um, but yeah, he's the asshole at the end of the day. Rob. Yeah, he's the asshole. He's trying to exclude someone rather than set the exact. He should have set the boundaries to, uh, you know, just the people he wants there and to pick a thing that they were already did together and say, yeah, but she can't come. That's just ridiculous. That is, that is like a whole next level. Um, yeah. <laughs> like find something else to do with your, with your brother, take him, go to a bar, watch a game, go to, you know, get a beer bus, do something like that. Just, he, he literally crosses his arm and is like, no, I'm not going <laughs> like a little kid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I 
don't understand this mentality. Like <laughs> I, it, you just need to be the, the simplest thing ever. As both of you said, is just to say, Hey, I would like to spend time with you. Can we do something together? Because yeah. if you go to your, you know, significant other partner, et cetera, and say, you know, Hey, you know, I want to spend some time with my brother, not even like best, like brother blood. Uh, you know, I want to go to a bar. Let's w- watch the game. Like these are the kinds of things that the wife should be understanding because in the same sense, when she comes to you and says, you know, Hey, I want to go hang out with my girlfriends. I haven't seen them in a while since we had the kid. Can you watch the kid tonight? Perfect. Like those are the things that should happen within those relationships. But we are talking about an event that the husband and wife went to all the time. (laughs) Um, So it would be kind of hard to invite the guy and not the, the wife. So I assume the the brother probably assumed that he was invited both, excuse me, both both of them. So yeah, that you actually just brought up a point. I was going to say, if I invited the two of you out somewhere and just invited you, I would totally expect your significant others be coming if they wanted to. You know, if I said, hey, we're doing a guys thing, that's different. But, you know, inviting you, it's I feel like most people assume that maybe not. Maybe I'm in the minority. By the way, I'm in on whatever that is. <laughs> whatever we're doing with just the guys or what, whatever. Yeah. yeah I, the guys. Way. Either way. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's something where I don't expect like with um uh nick former host nick like if i go and i invite him to something i half expect either tara to be there or even him to have to bring one of his two kids or both his yeah. kids like he might have stuff to do but if he wants to hang out with me i might have to deal with uh you know his two kids as well as him just to be able to get some time with him and if you value your time with that person then you value your time with their significant other, their spawn, exactly. their children. Like that's, that's just kind of the thing you have to do. I remember, um, you know, Dan and I, we, we used to go to local independent wrestling shows all the time here in Detroit. And there was a time where um, his uh, significant other at the time and his kids came with it. And it was just a, mm-hmm. a great party. Like, yeah, I, I invite Dan, Dan and I do this all the time, but there was a time where, you know, there was plus one or plus three, I guess it would be. And that's perfectly (laughs) fine. Like you, you can't not expect it unless you put in that initial caveat, like, Hey, we are going to the casino. I would just like to go with me and you. It's the same thing with any, not just brother, like family member, Mm -hmm. like, Hey, I want to spend time with you, dad on father's day. You know, you spend your whole life with your wife, just me and you, you know, for a couple hours, like, I don't, my did, high school did friends all? and I regularly get together, and when we first started doing it, we made the 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 decision. It's just us going, and then kind of floated the idea: should we do another one of these outings and invite the spouses? But they didn't go to our high school. None of the <laughs> wives went to our high school or know each other or <laughs> us. You know, know the rest of the group really all that well. So <laughs> I don't see how they would be interested. And that was pretty much the response from my wife. We have that we so I have a, a fantasy football group that we've been doing it for over 20 years. Um, all high school kids, uh, when we first started doing it, and so we have that one day where it's just us, we're just together, and we're doing our draft. That's our day now. Most of the guys with kids bring their kids so all the kids can have fun and play and just be kids for that entire time because it's August, so they're none of them are in school. Um, So, yeah, so we do that, but then we still have times where, you know, there are times where it might just be me. It might just be, you know, me and my, my fiance, it might be, uh, not everyone. Like it's an open invite kind of thing, but again, it's all communication. Mm -hmm. You gotta be communicative to the people that of what you expect. This guy was not, uh, open to (laughs) telling his brother, uh, uh, we have to assume because he, I would assume he would have been like, I keep asking my brother for one-on-one time and he won't do it. That's a whole different story at that point. Like if your, your brother is refusing to spend one-on-one time with you without the, the wife or anything like that, like that, that there's red flags in that conversation. Yeah. Either the wife has him under surveillance or <laughs> the yeah. brothers are bad influences. Or- yeah. I don't know anything about that, Dan. Oh, geez. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's an offline conversation for another time. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, it's, you just, 
there there are times like I I'm planning on going to see Dan in a couple months over in Arizona to go watch the Coyotes game, and I told Julian like it's just going to be Dan and I like you know if if you really wanted to go watch a Red Wings game which you've never seen the Red Wings play before in Arizona, all right, I guess you know maybe we you could come, but she's just like no, I'm going to stay home and. I mean, yeah, the and, bunk and, bed behind here is a queen size on the bottom, so it would work. Enjoy um, my four. Can, can I? I'll, I'll podcast from the bottom bunk. You could podcast from the top bunk. Oh yeah, <laughs> It'd be great. It'd be like Step Brothers or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so I want to finish the show um, asking both of you guys a a fun little question because I just watched a movie. Uh, there is a new movie on Netflix. It's starring Ethan Hawke. Um, it is about an end of the world scenario called Leave the World Behind. Um, Kevin Bacon's in there for a hot second. Maharasha Ali's in there. Um, I think Julia Roberts is in there. So it's a, a decent casted movie. But the ending of the movie, which I'm not going to spoil, uh, really upset me. Um <laughs> I had never been so invested. Like the movie's runtime was like two was over, two, over hours. two hours. Yeah. And the last, as it cuts to black, you're like, wait, it's over. <laughs> How is this movie over? Uh, I'm assuming Dan, you watched it and you know exactly I did. what I, uh, the other day, actually what I'm talking about. Is there a movie or maybe even a concert that left you so heartbroken because of the way it ended. Maybe they didn't play a specific song. Maybe they cut it too early or they played too much of the new stuff and nobody wants to hear the new stuff. Um, Is there a specific piece of content kind of like um, the end of lost? Like everyone got mad at the end of lost. Um, It was kind of bad. I I will stand my ground. I will do a bonus episode 335.5 about why the ending of Lost was good. But is the, the there the season before that should have been the ending, but go ahead, sorry. Is there a um uh, a piece of content or a concert that just left you not wanting more but just really upset? Uh, I'm going to go to Dan first because Dan, you go to a lot of shows. You go to, you know, you, you intake some, a good amount of content. Is there something that just really like just blew your mind at how dumb it was to, to so, end like that? So I'm going to start this by these concerts weren't dumb overall, but the ending was dumb for both of them. Um, and the second one actually I'm going to talk about was actually, there are more things that were dumb about that. First one being the first time I saw ministry back in the early 2000s, me and Bone Crusher were there. They didn't do a um, encore and they didn't play a lot of their big songs. You know, Ministry is an older band. They've been putting out a lot of albums too, but they left out a lot of their hits that a lot of people like to hear. Um, and everyone's like, wait, it's over? Like when the drummer's like, goodbye, we're done. Like everyone was waiting and they're just like, I was like, oh, okay. Uh, the other one, actually, I believe it was last year, a year and a half ago, was the Anthrax tour. Their like 40th anniversary tour. Um, they didn't. They sang one John Bush song, so they cut out the majority of their existence, and they also didn't do an encore. So they basically stuck with everything that was old, with a few songs. We're talking like 80s and 90s, with a couple of new songs sprinkled in. Um, those are two very disappointing times. The rest of that concert was great. If you like the Joey Belladonna years, which, uh, you know, they're one of the top thrash metal bands of all time, but you ignored some of your best songs ever when John Bush was the lead singer. So that was kind of disappointing as well. Rob, what about you? Uh, well, the the first thing that sprung to mind was a concert I went to probably in early 2000, um, somewhere in the very early 2000s. Uh, it's Folk Fest up in Calgary, um, and it is, it's it's a huge festival, multi-stage thing, a bunch of folk music, um, which seems to be just about well, it, the, the the parameters of that is quite quite wide. Anyway, the headliner for that day in, in, on the main stage included Chumbawamba. <laughs> Which I was not oh, there yeah. for. <laughs> I wasn't there for, but I, you know that's great. And so, Chumba Wumba was out. well. And so that's what the story is. <laughs> they did not play tub thumping. What? And, for a one-hit wonder. What? 
<laughs> and and so of course everyone was shouting, play tub thumping <laughs> at some point. <laughs> And their response was, that's the old shit. We're only playing the new shit now. <laughs> and and that's what they were doing. They were playing shit. And it was new. <laughs> and nobody knew it. <laughs> because it wasn't tough thumping. <laughs> well, uh, hold, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Would anybody have known if the shit was new or old in the first place? No. No, <laughs> no, no, one, no one listens to their other songs. No. I had the tub thumper <laughs> album, so I would have known most of the songs from that. But... <laughs> Yeah. nothing Lord. else did. <laughs> and they're in canada like it, it's it's all irish politics that they're singing about in canada and western canada even so it's not uh and then so the the capstone of it was they were they were followed by don mclean and that was the best part of the concert <laughs> like yeah I, I mean, he played uh starry starry night uh and you know american pie and like all all of his classics it was great it was wonderful <laughs> i dan while you were talking i i looked up cuz i i enjoyed watching ministry and i'm like oh, i wonder if they're coming to town soon and they're actually coming to michigan here in march yeah they're touring again right now they're still great for as uh old as jorgensen's getting um they're a lot of fun still definitely check them out uh yeah I've, I've already messaged friends being like you know hey do we want to go see this um so i i am excited for sure uh with that for me there's there's one that really upset me and i i can't deny like everybody talks about how i met your mother and how that show ended you always like, talk about that show it <laughs> It was such a great show that I do not want the last five minutes of that show because they were leading up to it in the first place. It wasn't really a shock. It was just a bad ending. Um, But for the ending of Dexter, if anybody watched Dexter, an amazing show that came out, um, I think it was on Showtime, and the end of Dexter was so annoying that I remember watching it and like I spent so much time watching this just for it to end like this and and we we, we talked about the end of, uh life at the end of the world or whatever the new ethan hawk show for two hours countless hours because this is long form hour long tv back then when dexter would be you know probably 20 episodes a season an hour long an episode six seasons like you invest a lot of time in that. It was the same with Lost. Lost had the the bad issue of uh, culminating with the writer's strike and um, the change of contracts where they're like, hey, you know, we know we wanted you to go eight 24 episode seasons. Now we're going to drop it to six. Um, yeah, I'll tell you what, you know, that's a lot of times I, with really good shows, I get disappointed that they do 10, 11, 12 episode seasons now lost would have been the perfect show to have like a 10 to 12 episode season because oh, that yeah, show yeah. got dragged on. Well, and it's the shows where they, they have three seasons worth of content and you know, it hits really well. And so they say, yeah, quick, we need two more seasons on the end of it type of those tend to have very disappointing last seasons. <laughs> and God forbid you have like a show you fall in love with on Netflix or streaming and you realize they get canceled and you're like, what do you mean they got canceled? Like that's the worst. This- I uh, if you guys aren't watching uh, a murder at the end of the world, which I believe is on Hulu, um, it's starring Britt Marling, who is the creator of the OA, which I think is one of the most underrated shows on Netflix ever. Go watch it right now um, or not, because you're going to be disappointed that it got canceled. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it got canceled in the middle of the, the run. So two, you're you're two SLO. shows. I can tell you Hannibal and it got season three on a cliffhanger and the show Colony ending on season three the cliffhanger both getting canceled was, they've been trying to get a season for a hannibal forever and they don't want it no one wants to do it i i remember it. when i started watching colony to catch up because it's got the same guy from lost in it mm-hmm. um yep. and i remember it getting canceled and i said well i'm not watching this shit anymore like it ends on a cliffhanger <laughs> it's really disappointing that it didn't continue there there's so much like good content out there. So I think I want to, we're, we're not going to do the news this week um, as kind of like, you know, there's not that much news to talk about. Um, it is. 
it's the holidays. We'll be back next week with Wendy, uh, who will be able to catch us up on a lot of things and we'll catch up on two weeks worth of news. Um, but I want to leave everyone with the opportunity to promote a show that they're watching or a show that they watched that you think a craft beer fan will enjoy. And the first thing I'm going to say is don't go watch Brewery Brothers on Netflix. Um, it is not good. Uh, it's got that one German DJ comedian like Flula DJ Zima. Is that is that his name? No, no, I, you know who that is. Never mind. That's oh, I realize what you said after the fact. No, yeah, um, yeah. So it's got the the guy from uh, he's in Pitch Perfect too, but he's like a famous like DJ and comedian from Germany. Um, so don't watch Brewery Brothers, but I think everyone should check out. There is a sci-fi thriller. That's kind of in the realm of Battle Royale or Hunger Games uh, called uh, Alice in Borderland. Uh, Japanese show. Uh, you can watch it in sub or dub. Um, uh, thank you. Bats McGee is on top of everything today. Fula Borg. Um, so go watch Alice in Borderland if you never watch it. It's two seasons. They're coming out with the third season. I feel like the third season is going to be like the culmination um, so unless they ended on it because they ended season two on a cliffhanger <laughs> and if they didn't go into season three, I would have been really pissed off. But is there a piece of content you think the uh, the craft beer fan are our content that it is directed towards might enjoy? Who are we starting with that? Either of you. I don't care. OK. All right. So. You know, I you know it's tough to say craft beer fan. I think anyone sitting back and drinking a couple of beers will enjoy this craft beer or not. If you haven't watched it, um, Squid Game: The Challenge, the reality Squid, the reality Game show, very good, very entertaining. Um, the way they do a lot of the games on there and even unique games not from the show is really well done. Uh, it's ten episodes, uh, about forty five minutes each, if I remember. Um, way better than i expected it to be i was pretty impressed uh i did enjoy squid game the actual show um and the the i don't know much about the reality show except if you do get onto tiktok no matter what your algorithm is it'll start feeding a lot of the players that were on the game show talking about the show like the red light green light episode took like 10 and a half hours to record oh wow like they had people standing still for like 45 minutes at Whoa. some points i have not seen any of that there is an episode i haven't watched which is the making of it that's on after the finale i might have to check that out now yeah i don't know if it's going to be on the making of it just because there is a lot of like behind the scenes stuff that um some of the content people i'm surprised they were able to do it without any like ndas and stuff what they were uh um telling everyone what had happened oh wow uh bats mcgee on the chat says if you do watch bruise brothers on netflix bruise brothers i shouldn't say but the brothers because yeah uh, those are great. those are our boys those are nice guys uh, <laughs> it helps a lot if you're drinking uh rob what about you what's what's something somebody should watch maybe during this break uh that so, you might think they'll enjoy uh, i started watching deadwood um because it's i it's pretty decent plain show like Finding shows to watch on an airplane is is tricky because you don't know who's going to be sitting behind you. <laughs> Wait, so what are you normally watching on an airplane? Hold on a second. Well, okay, so I watched um, Black Mirror. Watching um, porkies. Like what? I remember before one flight, the new season of Black Mirror dropped, and so I downloaded that. And the first one was the the video game fighter one where they inhabit. You know, it's it's oh, all VR. Yeah. Oh God! <laughs> At least it wasn't the one with the mayor or the governor. <laughs> yeah, the first episode. <laughs> the first exactly. The, yes, with the pig, right? <laughs> right. No. So yeah, you never really know. And I, I, but I watched Deadwood, and it is okay for watching on a plane. There's, there's tiny little racy bits, but it's fine. Like no one's really going to notice. It's not too bad. Um, but I, I do quite enjoy that show. And they say cocksucker a lot, which I find hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> um so that one I, I quite enjoy um parks and rec um so that's an older show and it's a good show set in indiana sort of um but the craft beer part of that is there's a whole whole lot of props from upland um and it started with like there was an upland bottle of this or that or or an upland picture of this or that in uh one of the bar scenes and upland saw it and sent them a bunch of props <laughs> 
<laughs> so that's, that's kind of awesome. cool. <laughs> so then you, if you know, now that you know that, if you haven't seen the show, you can watch for the Upland props. <laughs> I feel like that that sounds like me when I watched Guns Akimbo starring Daniel Radcliffe and it had Motor City Brewing Works bottles in there. And I'm oh, like, I, I know that, that. brewery. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I know that. Um, I, I don't know. Dan, I know you fly uh, a handful of different airliners, but on Delta at one point, I could watch Django Unchained um, on the the flight. Blood and, and violence like, is fine. It's boobs that are, you know, there's not boobs be in to... that though. No, that's all, it's not edited. Just no. I, 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 I'm gonna be honest. I never tried to watch it. Um, <laughs> you, you I... got a six year old sitting next to you. <laughs> <laughs> we we did watch the movie, and this is this is a fun little uh, like three actor movie called Fall. Um, which is about like free range climbers who do, you know, climbing and they wind up climbing this, uh, cell tower or radio tower or something like that. And it breaks down and they get stuck at the top. Um, it's, uh, what was the, the movie open water? I think it was the name of it where the, the scuba divers or something like that get stranded. Like they get left behind by the boat. Um, it's the exact same kind of premise with fall where they're just stuck on the top of a giant radio tower with no service. Um, I, we watched that and there's a few scenes in there where like you see a very dead person in there and like, like hurt dead. Like they fell dead. Um, and I'm like, Oh, I don't feel like that's something that, you know, I don't want a kid watching around me to, to right. see. I um, forgot about the strip club scene in Deadpool, but I love that movie. <laughs> And so that came I, on when I was watching it on the plane once. Yeah, I don't know if they do too many. So deal. So in, in my job, I actually deal with a lot of airports and we have to clear a lot of content with them because they don't want things like movies about airport hijacks or airport crashes or anything like that. Uh, to Terminal show. with Tom Hanks. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's that's I don't I feel like Terminal is probably the best movie they it could probably, probably work yeah <laughs> probably <laughs> show <of> <laughs> um but but these other movies like they're not gonna be able like Flight ninety eight or something like that like they're not gonna show that kind of stuff so they're very specific with what they show at the physical airport so um some of the ones I work with like Oakland uh, Cleveland MSY which is uh, Louis Armstrong uh, not St Louis um do 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 Louisiana uh, uh New Orleans yeah. New Orleans. yeah. Uh, so like they have a lot of rules and regulations of things that they can show and and having some of the things on the show, I'm like, well, you can't show an airplane crash, but I could show the, you know, the end scene of Django unchained with like Jamie Foxx's bare ass as he's getting whipped. Like, (laughs) Right. We can watch Showgirls, but we can't watch an Airplane watch the movie. <laughs> on the airplane, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cover your eyes, kid. It's not my job to protect you. <laughs> yeah, there, there's definitely been a time or two where I'm like, oh, that looks like a good movie. And I started watching it. I'm like, oh, that's not a good movie for me to watch with other people around me not watching it. <laughs> like, turn over and be like, oh, what are you watching, sir? <laughs> yeah. You should be put on a list, shouldn't you? <laughs> At least on, like, if you fly American, you have to watch it on your phone. They don't have a screen, but on Delta, it's just, like, right there. Yeah, that's, and that's, you can see I, several seats back, especially if you're on the opposite side. Yeah. I, I haven't <laughs> flown non-Delta in five years. So, I, yeah, like, that's that, those are all the options. And there are days where I, I message, my buddy's actually a Delta pilot, and I'll be like, how is this movie available to you? <laughs> and he's like, I don't know. I'm just a goddamn pilot. <laughs> um folks better on draft 335 thank you so much for joining us no news tonight so don't stay on uh don't expect a news segment uh up on monday we will be back however next week with wendy uh to talk about her uh shenanigans as she went around and uh, went to a bunch of breweries uh for myself rob and dan three letter names thank you so much for joining us i truly appreciate it and no matter what you think of your beer we think it's Better on draft. Have a good night.